there. Dawn from Dawn's Earthly Delights and Wildcrafted Botanicals. Today we are going to talk about stinging nettles in full. I apologize for the technical difficulties last time. So Urtica dioica, most commonly known as stinging nettles, is actually a very nutritionally dense and medicinal food. It is one of those things that you can harvest in the springtime. It's one of the first plants that will come up. It is a perennial plant which means it grows more than two years. It produces a uh, rhizome, which is just an underground stem and that's how it reproduces, but it can also reproduce via seed as well. Things to know about stinging nettle is you will find it in moist, rich soil. It likes the understories of trees, so you'll find it in um, open forests where there's cedars and um, Douglas firs and uh, Big leaf maples. <laughs> it, it can be found everywhere from the beach to the mountains. It tends to like moister areas, so it's found more up north than it is down south, but they do have a variety down south. I am not familiar with that variety, so you're gonna have to do some research on that. Stingy nettle produces these little tiny hairs underneath the whole section of the plant and along the stems. Now, all of those hairs are hollow and they have this little kind of a ball cap under on top of it. Think of it in terms of like a ballpoint pen. So once those are brushed up against, it releases what's called formic acid, and that's where you get that sting and it creates this histamine reaction. And that's the same acid that is produced by certain wasps and fire ants. And that's why you get that stinging. Oddly enough, one of the ways to counteract that stinging is to grab a handful of it, preferably with your gloves, crunch it up, it is a juicy plant, and then use that juice and rub it all over where you got stung, and that actually counteracts that stinging sensation and can, um, can cut the duration of that in half. I've been doing this for a while now, and the stings, just they just kind of don't really bother me so much anymore, so it doesn't matter to me if I get stung or not. Stinging nettle is very high in vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, magnesium, iron. It's also high in flavonoids, oxalic acids, things like that. It is used to as an iron replacement for dietary purposes. If you are taking iron to begin with, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna take in this very carefully because if um, a lot of you that do some research and you know that iron can cause constipation so if you're going to add this into your diet and you're already on an iron supplement you might want to be a little bit careful it is also very good for potassium i've had to take it for potassium as i have a, my body has a tendency to dump potassium without um just all willy-nilly and one of the medicinal purposes that it serves is that it actually strengthens, strengthens the mucous membranes and smooths them out. It's used as a diuretic, and that's why they use it for um, urinary tract infections and kidney infections, because it causes your body to flush more of the diuretic makes you pee, and then it smooths out the mucous membranes, including the ones that line your urethra, and it can help you get rid of that infection while also easing some of that pain that you experience from urinary tract infections. So that is some of the medicinal and nutritional qualities. There is a whole host of ways you can use this plant. You can make an oxymel, and if you remember an oxymel is 50% vinegar and 50% honey. It's delicious on salads. Today we are gonna use it to make a honey and a salt because I love nettle salt. It's great on my salads. It's great in your stews, your soups, to sprinkle over your meats and your eggs in the morning and your potatoes. It has a very earthy, rich flavor. I like it um, a lot, actually. One of the things you can do, oh, I almost forgot. One of the things, the reasons why you should always have this in your fir herbal first aid kit or anytime you go out on a hike is it works like an antihistamine, almost kind of like Benadryl. So if you are out and you get into something and you start having a reaction to whatever it is, I use it right now because I'm allergic to alderwood and it's actually blooming right now. So I'll take a couple of dropperfuls of this and the swelling in my eyes will go down and it's not so hard for me to breathe and you get a boost of energy as well because you've got all these flavonoids and the nutritional components to it. 
So it's one of those things that it has been known to help people um, get those precious minutes they need to get their EpiPen or Benadryl or get to a hospital. It can actually keep your throat from swelling shut when you're going into an anaphylactic reaction. Wendy's watching. So, hi Wendy! <laughs> Wendy is somebody I went to class with. We had an apprenticeship together and she's also one of my bestest, bestest friends and I have the utmost respect and love for her. And we get in all kinds of trouble together. It's, we call it the Wendy and Dawn Show. So, this is the time of year you want to harvest your stinging nettles. You want to do it before it goes to flower and you have to look very carefully because when it goes to flower, it goes at the base of the, it's called the petiole, the stem right here. And the flowers come out right through there and they're super tiny at first, so you kind of have to be careful. The reason why you want to get it before it goes into flower is because once it starts to flower out, those chemical constituents can change. And from what I understand, it can cause severe diarrhea and vomiting. So that's kind of counterproductive to what you want to do. Um, when harvesting this, you don't want to get sick from it. You actually want to build your body back up. So in order to harvest this, you can start harvesting when it first comes out. Even when it's as small as that, it's actually very good. It's, um, it cooks down very well. You can, you can eat it in soups, saute it up, that it'll, it'll um, get rid of all those little hairs so that you don't get stung. You can make teas. You can make oxymils, you can make an elixir, which is 50% brandy, 50% honey. You can make a tincture, which is the vodka that you use to tincture this up. The big way that you, the one thing you want to remember is you're going to want to use some really good kitchen gloves. And the vodka has to be 50 proof or? The vodka that I use, I use 151. So that way it breaks down and pulls out those those um, the medicinal quality of the plant because it draws it out. You do want to chop it finely for things like that because the more you open up the cellular structure of the plant, the more medicine you can pull. When, um, so when we start making the salt, so we're going to start with the salt first and I'm going to explain that. When you first start making this, if you're not sure how you're going to like it, start by making a small batch. Now this is a batch that I have already started. And my ratios are different. I like my stinging nettle saw to be super nettle-y, so my ratios are different. Feel free to play around with your ratios. A good base to start with is like half a cup tightly packed stinging nettles to half a cup of salt. Um, I usually use about two cups of stinging nettles to one cup of salt because again, I like it. I like that flavor a lot. And for making a salt, you're just gonna rough chop it up. Um, you don't have to worry about fine chopping it too much. The parts of the plants that are used, the whole plant can be used, including the rhizome. I tend to not use the rhizome or, you know, if you want to think about it, um, the roots, because I want them to continue to propagate. I don't want to deplete my, my stand of stinging nettles. And I like to get them all lined up and kind of twist them up for better rough chopping. should be a good half a cup tightly packed and the reason why you're going to use these kitchen gloves is because then you won't get stung they're thick enough that you don't have to worry about a little hair catching you um, regular gardening gloves uh, they don't really work very well because the tops are more fabric and I've been stung through those nylon or, or the um, nylar and latex gloves they're not going to work very well because again it will go through and sting you and if you're fine with the stings great use that but um, if you're not it can cause some discomfort and it can be irritating so here's a nice tight pack of half a cup of my nettles i'm gonna plop that in my vitamix wendy says hi hi wendy <laughs> just throw that in there and then i'm gonna add my salt Cassiopeia says hi. Hi Cassiopeia. Wendy. I haven't seen you in ages. I miss you. Wendy says, well, no we don't. Don't tell lies. <laughs> lies about what? <laughs> about the Dawn and Wendy show, I guess. Oh. <laughs> oh, because we get into trouble together. <laughs> We're seeing the comments now. I didn't see them earlier. So if you guys have any questions or comments for Dawn, let us know. Yeah. Now when I, when I puree this together, I like to do it low and slow, and the reason for that is 
the higher the velocity of your blade, the more heat it produces, and I don't want to destroy the vitamin C. The other thing you need to know, that salt works as a preservative, so you don't have to worry about letting your, that your, salt, your plant material isn't going to break down and rot because the salt is actually going to preserve it. So, low and slow. I use pink Himalayan salt because um, the salts with more colors in it tends to it tends to be a good indicator of the mineral content of that salt. Wendy, or Wendy wants to know where's the lid? You're gonna make a mess. I am not. That's why it's on low. <laughs> <laughs> Although uh, for entertainment purposes, sure I can do that. All right. So as you can see, it's blending in very nicely. It's turning a good color. I'm getting it finely chopped, but I'm not creating heat, so I'm not going to destroy the vitamin C or the flavonoids. So interesting fact, I've read accounts where Roman soldiers, when they were invading other countries and it was cold and they weren't used to that, they would grab handfuls of the stinging nettle and they would beat their legs with it because one of the things that it's, it does is when you get stung, it actually draws that blood to the surface area of your skin, and it does create a warming and um, a warming sensation, which is that burning, that stinging sensation. So the other thing, oh, I forgot my spatula. Um, the other thing we're going to do is once it's done, you're going to put this out on a paper towel because this is a really juicy plant. All right, so you're going to want it to dry out a little bit before you put it in your jar and that is because it will clump up if you don't. Don forgot her spatula. So I did. Improvising. You know, it works. All right, there you go. And that's it, easy peasy for your salt. And as you can see, mine that I've already made has been drying. I'm just going to spread that out. It'll dry up and then you'll have this super awesome salt and it won't be super clumpy. Okay. You can make, one of the things I learned in my apprenticeship when I first started doing this was stinging nettle energy balls. So you, you have, you use your dry stinging nettle and you powder that up. I, I bought a little coffee grinder specifically for herbs. You grind up some of that. Um, and I'll do, I'll do, um, I'll do my variation of the recipe and I'll post that up in a little bit. So you can add dandelion roots, stinging nettle, you use um, use a grain of your choice so you powder up some I use oat um, oatmeal I find grind that up into a flour use that and then you can coat roll those up with some peanut butter or nut butter of your choice some honey um, roll that up into a ball cover it in chocolate sprinkle a little nettle salt and you get a little energy boost a little a little power ball energy boost all right, now for your honey, this one we're gonna fine chop up a little bit more because honey works as an acid. And we want to, it's gonna draw the medicinal qualities and the nutrition out of the plant from that acid effect that it has. But for a honey, we're gonna fine chop it up a little bit more because you wanna open up as much as that cellular structure as possible. And then I like, I've already started a jar here, so I pack my jar tight and then I layer it with honey. And that's going to draw out all that medicine. It's yummy in teas, it's good on your granola, your yogurt. You know, wherever you want to put it, a little, little bit goes a long way because again, this is a very earthy flavored herb or plant. Like Sarah just shared your post. Oh, thank you very much, Sarah. And this is the time of year. It's actually popping up out of the ground. I mean, there's some places where it's already two feet high and in the 
place that I harvest around me, it's still only about not even five inches tall yet. So you just kind of got to look around. You don't want to strip your stands. You want to do this so that you're not stripping that whole area down in case somebody else would like to get nettles. But um, there's a practice of when you prune or when you take out, you can do it in a way that actually promotes growth. So just always be careful not to deplete your supply. Make sure that there's plenty for you know the critters out there. Um, you can also turn this into an oil. And the good thing about this anti-inflammatory properties is that when you make this into an oil, and I'll actually do a video later on about that, you can use it on inflammatory skin conditions such as eczema and psoriasis. And I actually made um, an eczema and psoriasis salve for a friend of mine and my nephew. And it works great. I love it. It also has the ability to knit tissue back together. So if you get scrapes or cuts, you can um, you can put some of this, you can put it in a, you can puree it and you can use that juice on a towel and you can cover your wound with it. Don't put plant material directly into a wound because you don't want to get infect, an infection that way, but you can put it, the juice on some paper towels and cover your wound for a good 10 minutes, change it out another 10 minutes and then put, you know, your, your medicinal antibiotic ointment on there and then cover it up and it actually helps promote healing very quickly. All right, there we go. And again, just gonna layer the honey with the plant material. Thank you for the thumbs up and the hearts. Yes, thank you very, very much. And for sharing it. Why should people share this? Well, because this is one way of taking charge of your own health and your own health care. Um, health care, the cost of health care is just, it's really extraordinary now. Deductibles are out of hand. The cost of prescriptions go way up. Antibiotics have a really nasty effect on your gut flora. And yeah, they're great in a pinch. If you're really, really sick, I'm not saying don't take an antibiotic. If you're really sick, you go to the doctor and you, you do what you need to do to get better. But for everyday health care, this is one step towards just being more independent and taking charge of your own health and your own health care. If you know how to make your own medicines, then if it's something that you feel you can handle yourself, then by all means, take care of yourself, handle yourself. If it's something that you don't feel comfortable treating, like you're really really not doing very very well then i encourage you please go seek professional professional help and we're just gonna... wants to know if you have any recipes for cooking with nettles uh i usually i make a lot of soups with it so kind of like how you would rough chop up some kale and swiss char spinach you can saute all that stuff together make yourself a good um soup base so your garlic and celery and carrots and things of that nature. I like soups in the winter and the springtime just simply because they're warming. Um, I use the salt a lot. I use the honey in my tea. And it's just, you can saute this up like you would any other leafy vegetable that you would, you know, you would make um, a vegetable saute. You can throw it in your um, stir fries. You can throw it, you know, you can make a sauteed spinach and stingy nettle and Swiss char, saute that up in some butter and some garlic or coconut oil if you would prefer. And you know, you can put that on top of a portobello mushroom. You can stuff your portobello mushroom with that. Or if you're a meat eater, you can stick that on top of your steak and it's delicious. So yeah, I may actually write up some recipes that I use this for and, and post those. I absolutely will do that. Um, so that's, that's what we have for making salts and making your honeys. That's really simple. It's not hard to do at all. Again, always use your gloves, especially when you're harvesting and processing this plant. It's a, it's a truly nutritionally dense food. It's super medicinal and it's one of my favorites and one that I always have in stock at all times for myself. And I eat a lot of it on my salads, the oxymels, because they're delicious. All right, so just so you know, classes are upcoming for Back to Basics, Small Scale Family Farming. 
Um, I will teach how we can decrease our footprint on the earth by getting back to small scale family farming. That is on March 24th. There will be 10 positions available. You will find, you can sign up on my Dawn's Earthly Delights on Facebook. I am on Steam It under Dawn Church 3, the number 3. You can find me there. I have a YouTube channel now under Dawn's Earthly Delights. You can find me, and now I've just started these two accounts. One is minds.org, M-I-N-D-S. That's a new, one of the new blockchain technology, as well as yours, Y-O-U-R-S dot org. And I've got accounts up and running on there. Look for my videos there. Look for my blog there. I will be posting more articles, more videos, more information, and just more. So this way we can all get back to taking care of ourselves, taking care of our families, eating healthy, being nutritious, and just being more independent and, and reclaiming what is true wealth, which is the ability to provide for yourself. And it's, what again, wild foraging, food security. Yay! It's awesome. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. And I love you all. I appreciate you. And let's get back to growing. Thanks. Bye.